I want to talk a little bit about Sabex ambassadorship. I will go into like what is it, but I'm hoping that it's something that we are all having to deal with in our life, in our careers, and in whatever uh, position you're in. <coughs> First, a little bit about uh, my company. What are we? We um, do a lot of custom work for customers. We have a lot of uh, firewalls. Basically, a lot of hosts uh, we have to monitor as well. VPNs, a lot of security, uh, and a lot of um, uh, mail scan clusters, that kind of stuff. Um, our customer base is really wide. So we, do, we deal with ISPs, with small businesses, uh, telcos. So really, a lot of variation there. Um, Sabix is in use for years already. Uh, we have a distributed setup, about 5,000 hosts. It's pretty big. Um, we also use uh, multiple master servers, and in some ca cases we give control to the customer, like we manage the, the servers for them. Um, this is also why last year at the conference I was a little bit shocked when uh, Alexa said, like, well, we might turn away from the distributed setup and uh, go the proxy way. Well, with that in mind, I'm already changing our architecture uh, towards that. But, uh, so, what is ambassadorship? Well, I think here at the conference I'm pretty much preaching for the choir. I think we all in this room are Zabbix fans or users. There's no much explanation there. But for me, I started uh, in IT uh, yeah, years ago um, using Zabbix for a very long time. And I, saw, like, I had a lot of, um, uh, you'll see the next uh, slide, a lot of progression, both with Zabbix, but also with the use and mainly to get rid of old legacy systems because I had to deal with a lot of Nagios users, a lot of Cacti users. Uh, this might sound familiar for some people. So about me, I used to work for uh, one of the first ISP in the Netherlands, really big setups, really big data centers, a lot of customers. Um, we implemented Savix there for the first time because we had to deal with stuff that Nagios could not solve for us. Basically, we had to see connection drops where the endpoints didn't go down, but we had to look at deltas, which is for us was the very first use case of Savix. Um, after that, I used to work for a very big uh, online uh, auction uh, uh, firm based in uh, 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 by San Francisco. And right now, uh, I'm working for a much smaller company, like I just said earlier, and we're using Savix 2.0 for that. Uh, especially uh, at this uh, big auction company, we started to do uh, different things, and I'll go into that a little bit, because especially the engineers there did not want a new system. They already had so many systems to deal with and to handle. Um, so I had to take another approach to convince people like that Savix was a good solution for them. Um, yeah, I'm a geek, a father, and I actually am a political scientist, so a little bit strange for engineering position. So over these years, I found out one important thing. Do not only focus on engineers, focus on management. So the management actually can give you resources both in machines, but also like in good DBAs, networking resource sources, etc. And that was my main lesson. Like when I came into the ISP for the first time, it was, I was mainly focusing on the engineers. But the trick, what I found is to get management on board as well. So with engineers over the years, I found, <laughs> I found out that engineers are either really busy or they're really lazy, or it's probably a combination of both, very likely. Um, the problem is they already have monitoring into place. They have an idea set up. It already wakes them up in the middle of the night. Uh, it's not something they particularly like, and you come with a whole new system that can potentially wake them up. Um, another problem, what we found with Savage is the learning curve. Because like after years of using Zabbix, you know the interface, you know the database model, you know everything. But for a new user, there's a lot of uh, the learning curve is really, really deep. Actually, it's really steep to get used to. Uh, what are hosts? What are items? How does it work? What is a trigger expression? Like simple things like that. You have to make sh absolutely sure that the engineers start to understand that. Um, Another problem with Zabbix is, and especially the large setup for the ISP and the, for, the, for the auction platforms, is the huge and huge amount of data that you get in, which is fine and up to the moment that you run into uh, problems with uh, your MySQL uh, installation. And suddenly you need a pretty good DBA 
to start tweaking the system and get everything organized. Um, I also found out over the years that Sabix needs a daddy or a parent. And that's a good and a bad thing. And in my case, um, the current company, they call me Zabias right now, because if there's something wrong with the monitoring, I will have to be the one that fixes it, which is not particularly a good thing. In a way, like, I can fix things really quickly, but you want the knowledge like, in your whole engineering team. Um, one of our main engineers, whenever something goes wrong, he's still big Nagios fans, will say, yum, install Nagios. This is him, because I actually threatened him, like, say this one more time, I will actually put you in an international conference. And uh, I found this old picture of him, so there he is, because he did say it again. So, when you deal with engineers, what are solutions to, to make their life easier? And then, then I have to see, like, what are the advantages? Well, especially in the ISP time, other discovery became a, a really big thing, and suddenly you start making um, things on the data center where new racks and switches were built, and automatically the switches were added to the system, etc. While as in Cacti and Agios, you mostly have to do these things yourself, at least at that time. But also, a good thing for the engineers is uh, an escalation path. Um, it's not the easiest if you have to set it up the, for the first time and, and to understand, but the, the net effect is that you can actually say, like, well, there's one guy on call, he's going to get the SMS first. And then half an hour later, when he doesn't respond, the rest of the team will get a message. And maybe an hour later, management. Um, that got really good results. But the nicest thing I found, there's two, like, the aggregates. That's where things really got good for engineering. Aggregates, and I have to say also, calculated items were a really good one for that. Because if I have 50 machines, in a cluster, a web cluster, we can burn down at night. I don't care about that. But if I start calculating the, the average CPU load of that cluster, that's something I really want to know when that breaks down, because then production will die. I mean, and that's something typically you can do with Savix and quite easily, and it makes your life much better. Um, then the next big step was low-level discovery. Now, I don't know who came up with that idea and who implemented it, but Thank you. It made life so good, because suddenly you have a whole bunch of engineers, and they don't have to enter new file systems. You, you can actually trim your, your templates down. We used to have like 50 templates for different Cisco switches and, and routers. And suddenly, you can use maybe three. So it makes life really easy, and things can change, and file systems can change, and they don't have to do everything. So that's where there was a lot of value we started. Right now, we're, the company I work for now, we're really starting to use the API, and we're starting to integrate with different systems. Uh, one of them is Rectables, which we actually decided to use Rectables as our uh, CMDB. Rectables is not fully optimal, doesn't have the perfect database model, but we looked at many different options, and this was the best. Um, so what we do now, uh, we enter a new si system, new server, and we can actually click on that server and say, like, you have to be back up. Uh, you need a, uh, a backup, or um, it could be a Cisco switch, and then it will actually make a call to Rancid and say, start backing up that s s uh, system. And the same goes for monitoring. That's where we're, we're still halfway, but basically every host you can click now, like set it to monitoring. The idea is that we make an API call to Zabbix, add the host with the right templates, and you're done. So that was a bit of a religious uh, decision there, because you, you come to the point like, who, who is right? Who has the truth? Is it Zabbix? Is it our uh, CMDB? Um, and then that ha all, every has everything to do also with low-level discovery, less templates. We, I used to have set up with a lot of temp templates, especially, especially for the different Cisco uh, uh, equipment we had, but try to keep it as simple as possible for them. This one is also a little bit for management, but that really helped, like in our idea about like monitoring, like the individual hosts, that's nice, but I don't want to be woken up at night of that. On top of that are the aggregates. On top of that, we do business metric monitoring, and I'm going to come back to that in the management uh, issues. Managers are quite easy. They, they want like, things predictable, pretty cheap. Um, the first thing I heard working for the online auction platform was just, but I already spent like four weeks and God knows how many money on Nigers and Cacti set up. Why would I go for something else? Well, because it's much better, but you, you, need, you need good arguments to use that. 
it's an internal project. That's not direct revenue. It doesn't really directly make you money. That's also something, of course, in the end, if you think about it, it will save you a lot of money, but you have to start understanding that. Um, it's also, it's yet another application. And, and you see manage, many managers like listen to their engineers and they want less systems, not more. So you don't really want to set up where you have Nigeria's Kakta and Zabbix at the same time. What, what do you listen to? And uh, that's the next one. The servers that Zabbix run on um, need quite some capacity. Like uh, I would like a, a terabyte uh, disk uh, setup, SSD, etc. cetera. Um, works brilliantly, but it's more expensive than a Nigeria server. I have to say, though, which is really impressive with Zebex development, with every new step that is being made, the performance is actually like, getting much better, you can, like, especially since 2.0. So it's, it's kind of a, a thing that will solve itself because both equipment is getting much faster. And um, Zebex is running much more smooth every release. So how to convince um, managers? Well, maps. Focus on maps, and it's something uh, which was really improved over the years. Uh, the only thing is that it still doesn't save automatically. Uh, yes, you know. <laughs> but it's, it's great, they love it. Like big maps, nice uh, little uh, green dots, uh, red lines. It's not something your engineers will look at all the time, but it's definitely something the bosses will like, because they can show it to their customers, etc. Now this is, the other thing is SLA reporting. That's what management finds really interesting. Like we have this cluster running. What is your uptime over the last week or the last month, et cetera? The only thing that I see, so it's also a little bit like there's improvement that can be done on that part in Zabbix, I, I think. Like importing and exporting. Like if I want to add like 100 hosts with three che checks each for SLA reporting, that's a lot of clicks. That's something I would like to see automated. Well, the API, they also find really interesting the moment you start integrating with content manage, like with their assets, um, their money, like their um, CMDBs, uh, other stuff. Business metrics, the final frontier, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit what we did with the online auction system. We had a huge databases running, and these databases will show you how many listings are in there, uh, how many replies to listings, you, you can imagine like a classified pl platform. We didn't have any particular monitoring on that. So I went to the main DBA and asked him, like, can you write me a query just showing me all the listings in the last five minutes? He did that. He made his indexes and using the service user agent uh, user parameters. We started filling the databases with that. So suddenly, you can show your management, like, hey, this is how many ads over a week. And that's actually, for them, that's direct revenue. They don't care about a cluster running bad or whatever. But the moment listings are hit, that's you know, that's value per second in the most literal way that you can think of. So they care about that. And then you have something cool like the time shift function. Where you can say like, hey, the amount of listings in the last hour is really different from exactly a week ago. And normally there's weekly patterns. So they find that really interesting. And then you have my boss, my current boss. We, like, a couple of weeks ago, we got the Oculus Rift. It's a nice uh, virtual reality uh, device in development. Well, it's his dream to fly over Zabbix maps with his Oculus Rift, so who knows? It's a cool idea. So how do you start uh, getting Zabbix into a company? Well, I would say, like, start small. Start collecting a lot of data. Don't uh, use the triggers, like, too much, like, um, or make sure not all the engineers start receiving all the alerts yet, because there's a lot of trimming that needs to be done first. So, Start collecting a lot of data, and then at some point you will be able to come up with nice solutions for, for small problems, really showing the effectiveness of Zabbix. Like, okay, I can compare these five machines with that one, they have a dependency on this, and you have it in order quite, quite quickly. So don't start too big. Also, it's a lot of work. There's just no denying in that. You need, need help, but to, like to, especially if you're in large environments, it's not something you do in a day. It needs a lot of attention, a lot of tweaking uh, from MySQL to, to the system it itself. Uh, make sure alerts don't go out when they don't have to. Um, and then you have to get the organization with me. And that was one, one of my mistakes. I was the only expert, which is like bad if you go on holiday for two weeks and something really breaks. It's not, not what you want. And yeah, show your results to management. The cool maps, etc. things they can use to customers is very, very helpful.
So this is just a couple of things, and hopefully more people in the room will have uh, more ideas or even better ideas. But I would say, like, I would like to see a lot of better reporting just out of the box. Right now, the reporting function is uh, interesting, but I know what's in the database, and I know what, is, what should be able to come out, um, which is, again, very interesting for management, et cetera, and, but that's, that really would help with the case in like, getting subjects in. Um, yeah, the user interface. Um, I'm really used to the whole user interface, but I noticed that first-time users, we need maybe a very simple setup or to begin. And there, there are small little things that I overlook over, over the years. For example, new setup, new user, you go to configuration and items. And then normally I'm used to this whole field where I can select items and certain conditions, but there's this like, small menu function that hides it, st standard. And all my new users that I have to get like learn the system, they overlook it. They don't see that time bar, etc. So there's things in the user interface that I think potentially could be really improved or made, made different. It's by no means critique because I use it with, with ease. But it's something I notice. Um, yeah, the SLA support. I would love to see more SLA support, and I mainly mean like how do I add like 100 hosts with so many items, and how do I check that? Because it's something that like. There's more demand coming from there, and all that information is in the database. It's really one of the big powers that Subex has. Um, something maybe more for marketing, or in like Subex marketing, or just overall, it's like I would like to see good fact sheets. Maybe we should start collecting arguments together, like why is Subex better than Nagios? Why is it better than this, this system? Like to compare everything, so it's something like you can actually take up a Subex website or whatever. Uh, I know there's already stuff around, but that's uh, something I, I need, always uh, good argumentation. Um, yeah, and then the standard templates. I always notice like, when I start adding temp like my templates are tweaked over the years, of course, but then when I use a new setup, new templates are pretty trigger-happy, and I like, like very short intervals. And I know it's the responsibility of the end user to do that. But for a first-time user, uh, that could be something that could be changed uh, very easily. Um, so I don't know if, you, if there's any suggestions from the room, but could be better. I know like the reporting got, uh, uh, some people said yes to this, but for me it's like a bit of an, uh, an open discussion or if people have questions about it, go ahead. It's more like questions and suggestions. I want to add uh, another point to your list. Uh, some example of uh, hardware is uh, needed from Zabbix for enterprise. Uh, so, uh, many customers ask, uh, how, uh, what kind of hardware I need for Zabbix to monitoring um, 20,000 of uh, device? It's a, it's a very what, what, what kind of hardware? Yeah. Uh, what it, kind it, of I know hardware? for a fact it is the calculations are in the manual. You, you can find them. No, for DB. Right. You're able to uh, calculate the dimension of database, but not but is, we don't have a, uh, an example or best practice to, uh, um, to understand what kind of installation I have to make for my customer. Yeah, that, well, that makes sense. And, yeah. and the hardware issue because it can get really expensive. I've, like, there's really nice setups that that I used to have. Like, they had 100 gig RAM, so you load basically your whole inode to be in memory and with SSD. That's that's pretty fast, but it's also very costly, and especially for smaller companies, that will be a very good one. Oh, for, for, small, uh, for small installation, is not so big uh, a yeah. problem. But uh, for enterprise uh, customer, is the first thing, uh, first uh, question, because uh, the licenses for uh, licenses support in uh, Zabbix is based on server. So, how much cost Zabbix? Yeah, I must say how many servers need, but how how many servers I need to mo to monitor my uh, my uh, company? I don't know. It's not simple to. No, no, no. I I bet like I know Zabbix does a lot of turnkey solutions these days, and I bet they can come up with a nice console around it as well. Oh. So, but it's uh, that's a good question. It's something yeah. Uh, yeah, what I said, like managers always go on about the cost of the hardware. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at the moment, uh, when the Zabbix servers is starting, uh, 
all what just the Zabbix server does is done by uh, uh, child processes. So uh, main processes are doing almost nothing. And uh, what I've been th uh, thinking in the last few days, it will be good to add, uh, it's just a kind of a collecting some statistic what some child processes are, are doing. From point of view, just, uh, mm, I don't know, tweaking even. <coughs> Simply, it will be good to have uh, some kind of a statistics which can be used on uh, just a tuning Zabbix server. So I'm not sure if everyone could, could understand, but are you asking about like internal items, those kind of statistics? And how, how does Maybe yes. No. Running? I, th I think that's into place, although with one exception, that's the proxies. As far as I know. Yes. And like, I can't wait for that because that's, that's one of the hardest things to tune now. That those are the proxies. But the servers, you can actually use the... Internal yeah, items. but you know, sometimes it will be good to have uh, the same uh, functionality, but on uh, just uh, exactly Zabbix server, not on a proxy. What Zabbix server is doing for just a tune them? Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, are you using internal items? Because that is possible. You can see like which processes need more, etc., and how they are running. Uh -huh, okay. I, I can maybe show you in like uh, afterwards. No problem. Okay. A lot of the points you bring up are, are great and uh, actually a lot of these things you talked about are s something I'm going through in my company convincing um, convincing management and such that Zabbix is a route we want to go. Um, and I, I definitely would reiterate what you say with the UI needing, s it needs some work, it needs some additional functionalities. Um, you know, better ways to, you know, user specific graphs or being able to grab items and stick them all on a single graph, all from a single user interface to all on the fly. So the, the big strength is its, data, is its data collection. One of its weaknesses is the UI. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Although we use screens a lot, and that's very helpful. The screens is something I actually can show to the managers, basically the screens and maps. The dashboard is very configurable, but my manager should not look at the dashboard. It gets too complex. Hello. Uh, so I think it's it's a discussion who have been in the forum and and uh, we, we we need some central place for the templates for all the templates people are making. And I say I, I know Richard have tried to 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 do something about it, but well, he drank too much beer, I think. So. <laughs> I, th I think there was a site where they were online, right? Because I remember upgrading to 2.0, and then I also wanted all the new templates, especially with uh, low-level discovery in them. And so, but it wasn't on the Zavix site itself; it was somewhere else. Raymond. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real, real repository for different. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. I would only mention about uh, when we are talking about internal uh, items and about health of Zabbix, maybe uh, some hint only that uh, it could be great to lock something because uh, the, if Zabbix uh, server is uh, uh, misconfigured or uh, has um, something, something is bad that uh, queue is full, so it would be great to uh, uh, put something, some information to, to Zabbix server log because uh, many people use Zabbix but nobody take care about internal items and to look into uh, health of Zabbix but it would be nice like uh, Apache says uh, increase the number of processes because every because uh, all processes are full so only only some hint into the log that uh, something is bad look there or something it could help too much Thanks. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Although I wonder, like, I think that the triggers on the internal items kind of already warn you because, like, if something like is below 80% or whatever, I think that the information should come from that trigger. You can actually get the mail because the thing with log files is I start digging in log files if something is broken. Not before, in many cases. Yeah, but uh, but I think like there's a st standard templates with the internal items with also pretty good triggers on them. Some some a little bit too trigger happy, but. But that's also online, right? Yeah. So one of the one of the, the things that we found 
to be uh, or, or would be very useful for various different development teams within our company is the ability to easily create maps. At the moment, it's quite a time-consuming exercise to actually do that. Um, it doesn't seem like there's stuff in the API really to allow that either. I think screens, screens you can use XML, obviously. Um, there might be something in the API for screens, but maps is a, is a slow, painful task right now. No, I, I agree, and there's a safe button thing. But the, I remember last year there was a really nice talk about like automatic map generation. I'm not sure if that... Was that Folter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, I, yeah, I remember even that um, that speech as well. Um, it was good, but it's quite a there's still quite a lot that you have to do um, to actually get that working. Something that we've been discussing is actually with the um, uh, the NetFlow and SFlow would be to actually auto generate a map based on results that come from something like SFlow or NetFlow, maybe using API or or whatever. But somehow you need to do some discovery of your network then and, and understand how to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but without the ability to do that with maps right now, that's pretty difficult. Yeah, agreed. I don't cope with the maps, but uh, I think they can be updated using the API also. Uh, I, because we have a lot of maps made by my colleague and I think he uses the API for it. So uh, it's like a multipod status uh, for a lot of servers. Uh, yeah, for all... I, some some other things as well. Uh, so, okay. Looking at the um, API description now, it doesn't clear. It doesn't obviously give any indication that you can put a map together. You can create a map and update certain things on a map, but height and width. But it doesn't. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm not sure about it because I, I I don't do it. But yeah, maybe you just need some tutorials or something. <laughs> Well, there is a lot of improvements in the map, like the, the macros and the type of servers you can use now. That already makes life easier. Drag and drop. Yep, very impressive. Uh, hello. It's, it's just regarding maps. There's a, on the blog. There's actually a recent uh, post where where somebody's have made some at least some kind of semi-automatic map. And it's Walter. Okay, he wake up sometimes. Fine. <laughs> So that's uh, going to be the last question, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know where it, it, it started to become a, a feature uh, request session, but um, uh, on the web check, sometimes you have a, a, a something really running well for, for some days. They change something on the website. He suddenly starts, stops to see the word that he is request to see. Uh, one feature that would be really useful is to see the dump, the actual now, uh, information that Zabek sees from the web check in order to check why he's not seeing something from there. But that sounds like a real feature request right there. <laughs> Thank you very much for this great speech, and uh, I guess all of you had fun.